Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Christmas party. I don't know what's wrong with me. I said this time, gee, there were so many here last year. I don't know whether anybody's going to show up or not. They probably figured, well, I've seen everything last year. I'm not going to get up early and come to this party. Why should I get up an hour early just to come to a Christmas party? But what happens? The house is full again, and you make me so happy. Nice to see every one of you. May I ask you a few questions, first of all? Uh, how many of you were here last year? Oh, a goodly number. How many were here the year before? Oh, we have a lot of veterans. <laughs> we'll see that you get the Congressional Medal or something. How many are here for the first time? Curious, huh? <laughs> well, welcome to our party, and uh, we're going to have lots of fun. I tell you, if any of you ladies would like to help, do you need any help, Vi? Or do you have enough? You can wrap candy, or any of, if any of the gentlemen would like to help wrap candy, you can come right up here and, and make yourself at home. And uh, help yourself to coffee. Mr. Benson over there, our sunbeam man, will be, serv man, will be serving the coffee. And for your gifts... Uh, adopted family gifts on the left side of the tree and the canned goods for the cerebral palsy training center on the right side. Isn't our tree beautiful? Say ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> okay, swell. Well, first of all, how about singing a chorus of jingle bells if I can dash over to the piano here? How many of you had a hard time getting up this morning? How many have a hard time getting up every morning? <laughs> I don't know. After three years, I don't know, I still wonder. But I guess it's worth it, huh? They say us early birds are the salt of the earth. <laughs> I'm beginning to believe them. Well, I'd like to talk to some of you people. We got it, Perry? Swell. First of all... What's this fellow's name right here? Jerry Roy. Jerry what? Roy. Roy. Well, how are you, Jerry? Fine. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve, huh? Where do you go to school? Lemon Grove. Lemon Grove, huh? Boy, you get up before breakfast to get down here, huh? Yeah. Did you come with your dad? Uh-huh. Is this your sister over here? Yeah. What's your name? Carol Roy. Carol. Nice to have you with us, kids. Jerry, what do you want to be when you grow up? A flyer. A flyer? What kind of a flyer? Oh, just fly a plane. Oh, a plane. Okay. <laughs> Lots of kinds of flyers, you know. <laughs> and what's this gentleman's name? Eastep. Eastep. Oh, yes, I know you. Nice to have you with us, sir. And where do you live? Out on uh, Juniper Street. Juniper Street. And what do you do? Carpenter at North Island. A carpenter at North Island. Oh, you're a newly bird, huh? I come down on the bus with a lot of fellas from North Island, and uh, believe me, <laughs> I don't know how they do it. <clears throat> have to get up at 5 o'clock to be to work at about 8, I guess. That's it's quite right. a trip over there, isn't it? And what's this little girl's name? Deanna Winslow. Oh, you're uh, uh, our engineer's little girl? Yes. Oh, well, nice to have you with us, Diana. Well, Mother has arrived in the family. Hi. <laughs> and what's your name, little girl? Marilyn Smith. Marion Smith? Marilyn. Marilyn Smith. Where do you live, Marilyn? Up in San Diego. In San Diego, huh? What grade are you in? Fourth. Fourth grade, huh? Swell. Nice to have you with us. May I say hello to you? Good morning. Good morning. What's Good your morning. name? Good <laughs> morning. Feld, Florence Feld. This is Florence Feld. Uh huh. Are you a regular slumber buster? Well, I listen quite often at home. Oh well, that's first, that's good enough. I've been for three years down here. Uh huh. How long have you been in San Diego? Long time. Twenty, twenty some years. Uh huh. Think you'll stay here? Indeed. <laughs> okay, swell. Nice to have you with us. And your name? Oh, I recognize you. Laura English. Laura English. Uh huh. Tell us about yourself. What do you do? Oh, I work all the time. Long days. <laughs> you do? Especially now. That's strange. She works. <laughs> uh, well, my husband has the diamond cleaners. He has the diamond cleaners. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll take your check after the program for that plug. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to have you with us, Mrs. English. Hi there. Hi. 
What's your name? Margaret Andrews. Margaret Andrews, huh? Where do you go to school, Margaret? Roosevelt. Roosevelt, huh? Never heard of it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you with us. And your name? John Andrews. Is this uh, your brother here, Margaret? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. How old are you, John? Sixteen. Sixteen. What are your plans for the future? Oh, loafing. <laughs> loafing, huh? <laughs> Who wants to work? He says, okay. Boy, I'm glad I'm thin. I can get between these rows like, just like nothing. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Mrs. Covey. Mrs. Covey. No, Covey. Oh, Covey. That's right. I've oh, been yes. A, I've been a week since 2 o'clock in order to get down here. <laughs> I couldn't go yeah. back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people said that uh, they got so worried about whether they were going to get here on time, they stay awake all night, especially uh, Mr. Stewart. We'll take care of him in a moment. <laughs> And what's your name? My name is Mrs. Seeley. Mrs. Seeley? Uh -huh. Nice to have you with us. What part of town do you live in? 21st and C. And what does Mr. Seeley do? Oh, there isn't any Mr. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, all right. Listen every morning. Gee, what are those you have on your coat? What scary things? <laughs> Spiders? <laughs> Scare you to death. And what's your name? Barbara Revide. Barbara who? Revide. Revide? Revide. Where did you ever get a name like that, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my dad. He's French. French, and uh, did somebody over here say you were from Germany? Yes, sir. Is that so? Doug, by the way, has a uh, singing commercial, if you might get him... Your get son? For, yeah, for McMahon's. It's a TV, Motorola TV. I oh, think. he does? Would you like to sing it, son? No, I'd be too scared to. Oh. Well, you give it to me. Maybe I can sing it. What? Do you have it with you? Oh, it's in your head, huh? It's in my head. <laughs> oh, come on up here. Why don't you sing? Come on up and let's sing it, huh? Oh, you couldn't sing in <laughs> bashful type, huh? Well, we'll think it over. Maybe you can get. Maybe we can get to you a little later, huh? What's your name, please? Lily, I'm Al. I'm of El Cajon. El Cajon. Uh -huh. Say, you had to come a long way to get here, didn't uh -huh. you? I've been a week all night. Do you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Isn't it awful, huh? Getting up in the dark. How are you enjoying the coffee? Oh, immensely. This is a, this is a lovely party. Well, thank you. We think so, too. Is this the first time you've been uh -huh. here? Uh-huh. Yes, it is. Well, fine. We'll be looking for you next year. Thank you. I'll be back. <laughs> well, I make it myself. <laughs> and your name, please? Jeanette Jenkins. Jeanette Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Say, you people have never written me a letter. I don't recognize you. No, we're, we're new people. I'm from Utah. I'm just visiting in El Cajon with my sister. Oh, I see. Is this the first time you've been out west? Uh, no, I've been here twice before. I see. And uh, do you... Which do you prefer, San Diego or Utah? Oh. That's an awful question. <laughs> oh, this time of year. Why ask me? Huh? <laughs> you like our warm weather, but oh. you also like Utah's cold weather? No, oh, I like warm weather. <laughs> you like warm weather. Good. Thank you very much. I think I know you. Mrs. Smith? Mrs. Smith, that's right. I just From where? To... From 3419 Stern. That's out on uh, Loma. Uh, Loma Portal. Uh -huh. Nice to have you with us. Thank I understand you. your husband works at the post office. That's right. Has he gone to work already? Oh, sure. He brought me in. Oh, he did? Yes. Oh, fine. Now what I... time do you get up in the morning? I get up at about a half hour before he does. I get and what up time at is that? At 5. 5. He gets up at 5.30. Well, that's early enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, the mail must go through. Uh -huh. And uh, how long have you been living in San Diego? Uh, seven years. Seven years, uh-huh. And uh, how long has uh, your husband been working for the post office? What does he do down there? Oh, he's a carrier. A carrier, huh? Uh -huh. Uh, he's been working in the post office for 27 years. Has he got flat feet by this time? No. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't? Not even, not even any you got to prove it to me. <laughs> and uh, you look familiar, too. Hi. Yeah, Helen Dillon. Sure. Mr. Dillon is one of KFSD's and uh, uh, the U.S. Grant Hotel's best elevator operators, and he really takes care of me in the morning. I come in feeling so sad and downhearted, and uh, just then I get in that elevator, and Lester cheers me up. Uh, this is his day off, and I want to <laughs> say, hello, Lester. <laughs> I'll bet he's soaring up a quarter of wood. I bet yeah. he isn't listening. I'll bet he isn't listening either. <laughs> Nice to have Doug, you with I us. I want to thank you for the many hours of pleasure you've given me all year. Oh, gee whiz. Thanks a lot, Mrs. Dillon. Have you got all the answers, Jimmy? Are the questions? You'd like to have the answer? Oh, yeah. All right. Come with me. We have a question that we asked everybody as they came in. Can you all hear me out there? We have a question. Did everyone put down a guess and answer as to how many Christmas trees were sold in the United States Last year, did you all do that and put your name and address on the paper? I hope to. 
No address? Well, all right, long as we have your name. Now, uh, if we can find the answer, Jimmy will uh, see who gets the closest. Do you have it there, Jimmy? Here it is. There you are. Okay. Oh, here's some here, Jimmy, too. Fine. <laughs> and what's your name? Mary Ellen Smolensky. Oh, yes. Hi. And this is your mother over here, huh? Nice to have you with us. Uh, Mary Ellen, uh, would you tell us something about just how old are you? Well, I'm 18. I'll be 19 soon. 19 soon, huh? <laughs> Fine. What were you going to say? Oh, a ring. Say, that's nice. Who gave you the ring? Donald Foster. He lives in La Mesa. Oh. Uh, is this uh, is this it? Are you uh, yeah. you're engaged? It's, I was. See, that is beautiful. Well, let me congratulate you. Uh, have you made any definite plans as to? Uh, yes, we hope to get married February third. February third. That's a good month. That's my birthday month. Gee, congratulations. And how does mother feel about this? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Nice to have you with us. How's the donuts? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Coffee's good, too. I didn't ask you. Be quiet. <laughs> I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Where do you folks live? Uh, 4348 El Malena, La Mesa. Out in La Mesa. Uh-huh. You get good reception out there? Wonderful. Good. Oh, I knew you did. I just... <laughs> oh, this is your mother. I'm Mrs. Cunningham from... Boundary Street, San Diego. From Boundary here. Street. You're a native here, too? Yes. I see. Well, nice to have you I'm with us. I'm long enough to be a native. I've been here 41 years. Uh, 41 years? Well, I guess that's long enough. <laughs> you were born here, too, huh? Fine. Okay. May I talk to this lady here? What's your name? Hello. 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 Are you Mrs. Uh, Wagoner? Yes. 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 You were here sure. last year. Yes. And uh, you were celebrating your... Our uh, 56, and it's 57. And it's 57 this 57. year. Say the... Ladies and gentlemen, the Wagoners are here again this year, and they're celebrating their 57th anniversary. Let's give them a big hand, huh? <laughs> Would you stand up, sir? You want to stand up? Here's Mr. Wagoner and here's Mrs. Wagoner. We won't make her stand up. <laughs> She's got her hand full of donuts and coffee. <laughs> well, thank you. Gee, I'm glad you do. May I speak to you? What's your name? My name is Mary Pangborn. Mary who? Pangborn. Pangborn, I see. Would you like to try to win maybe a popcorn popper from McMahon's Friendly Furniture Stores at 831 6th Avenue and an El Cajon Chula Vista Escondido and Vista? <laughs> <laughs> well, now I, now, I might have to answer a difficult question. Well, no, wait a minute. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. It, it's not a popcorn popper. This is going to be a bring down. It's a plastic <laughs> dampener bag. <laughs> I forgot about the popcorn popper. I have a, a, another way of giving that away, which I will explain in a moment. But uh, if you don't mind, I would like to ask you a question. Could you name the five Great Lakes? Oh, uh, Michigan, Ontario, uh, Superior, um, Erie, and Erie. Huron. That's right. Congratulations. And uh, here is our plastic dampener bag from McMahon's Friendly Furniture Stores. You put your clothes in this, or a small child if you wish, and shake them up and they're ready to wash. I mean iron. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. I recognize this gentleman. Hi there. Oh, John H. Langley. Mr. Langley. Yes, sir. And what's all this, uh, these things you brought me this morning? Some well, special... Uh, for you to put over the air to the... Uh, little box for the day? Uh -huh. Yes, you bet That's there. well. Yes, you are retired, sir, are you? Yes, sir, I am. Uh, well, I met with Misfortune last year. Why I wasn't here, I got run over by automobile. My Is that so? Yes, last November. Oh, for gosh sakes. And uh, that's the reason I wasn't uh -huh. here. But I listen to you every morning. Oh, well, how are you now? Are you in good shape well, now? Well, fairly good. You see, my leg was cut open, my ankle broke, and my back. Oh, that's a four shame. Four months and 12 days in the hospital. Uh -huh. I had an awful narrow escape with old Grim Reaper. Boy. Well, that's say, another uh, example. Yes. Why don't you come out to my home and see it sometime, would you? You, you know, are a, you're a gardener, aren't yes, you? I'm a yeah, I understand gardener. you have some very beautiful yeah. flowers. Uh, I've got nice flowers, nice yard, and I've got uh -huh. all the fishes in the pond. Big little children, I've watched them learn how to swim. Can I go swimming in the pool? <laughs> no, it's <just> hardly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably go up to my ankles, yes, huh? Oh, nice to have you with us, Mr. Langley, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Don't you have any more accidents now? I, I watch the cars, believe yeah. me. Okay. 
Eddie. <laughs> it's one of those no-cross blue books. This is Mr. Salisbury. I hope he has his arm around Mrs. Salisbury. Yes, yes, CBS himself. CBS himself. What do you do, CB? I work for the county. Work for the county. What do you do for the county? Indoor pilot. Indoor pilot? Yeah. What in the world is an indoor pilot? Elevator operator. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> an indoor pilot. That's, I've never heard that before. That's very good. Uh, where is that? Downtown here? Downtown Civic Center. Civic Center. Yeah. Fine. How long have you been an indoor pilot? Oh, off and on for about 30 years. Do you ever get a, 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 a feeling like sometimes you'd like to just keep on going through the roof? <laughs> many a day, many a day. <laughs> Glad to have you with us, Mr. Salisbury. Now, if I can just get around over in here. <clears throat> Hello, who are you? Mrs. Hearn. Mrs. Hearn. Another bean. Have you ever written Boston. me a letter? Uh-huh. You have. Uh -huh. Hearn, I don't recognize that. And you're from yes, Boston? I'm a bean. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> How long since you've been in Boston? Oh, well, I left there in 22. 22? Oh, I've been oh, all my life a there. Long time, is long that right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's a long time. And, uh... How do you like our, I, well, there's no comparison, I wouldn't oh, no, say, to the weather, oh, no. Boston's weather. And I've the... shoveled too much snow. <laughs> I know snow. what you mean. <laughs> and who is this young lady? Mrs. Cody. Mrs. Cody. And what do you do, Mrs. Cody? I um, work at the Civic Center. You work at the Civic Center. Fine. That's a very nice uh, sprig of, uh, you have some pine cones. Some and cresses. Everybody's all dolled up this morning with it. <laughs> 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 well, now, if you hadn't told me, I'd have thought surely it was from... Uh, uh, what's the place on Fifth Avenue? <laughs> Macy's? <laughs> Very nice. Uh, uh, what do you do at the Civic Center, Mrs. Cody? I'm working for the assessor. The assessor? Yes. Is that something to do with taxes? Yes, it does. Hmm. Very much. Uh -huh. so. We'll pass right along. Okay, Glad to have met you, Mrs. Cody. <laughs> what's your name? I'm Mrs. T.W. Reese. Mrs. T.W. Reese. Well, how are you? I know you for sure. Uh, sure I know you your telephone you. voice. <laughs> Uh, what do you do, Mrs. Reese? Uh, I work for the government. Where's Mr. Reese? Uh, he's at sea, and you played a record for him. Remember when he came home for a little oh, while one day? Oh, that's right. Is that the one... Uh... I wanted forgotten, and you played uh, Four Winds in the Seven Seas. That's right. That's right. He's He came in here, and then he was off, and he's been going and coming and for a long he's time. He's on his huh? way to Guam now. He's on his way to Guam. Uh-huh. And uh, how long is he going to be in Guam? Well, he'll be back in March. In March? Uh-huh. Fine. <laughs> Do you have any children, Mrs. Reese? No, I don't. Have you got any spare ones? <laughs> well, we have one up here, but uh, he's not a spare. By the way, have you met my newest son? Uh, I talked my wife into getting up real early this morning, and she brought him down, and that's him. That isn't my wife holding him, though. That's uh, a Mrs. Jacobs. See him up the back? That's little David, and we might get him to say a few words <laughs> in a couple of years. <laughs> And who is this young lady? My wife? Uh, where is she? Oh, she's serving coffee. You can't see her now. Yeah, she's blonde, more or less. <laughs> and who are you? Uh, Virginia Stout. Virginia Stout. Oh, yes. I've received many a letter from you. You have very nice handwriting, Virginia. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I work for the government. You work for the government. Uh -huh. Do you know Mrs. Reese? I work with her every day. Oh, I see. You came together. Yeah. Are uh, you married? Yes, I am. Fine. Where's Mr. Stout? Uh, he's in Los Angeles. What's he doing up there? He's going on to a, school. Oh, the inquisitive one, huh? Yeah. What's he studying in school? Uh, television and radio. Is that right? What phase? Uh, well, uh, engineering. Engineering, uh -huh. I see. We hope to have a television set here, a station, I mean, at uh, KFSD one of these days. Glad to have you with us. I'm glad I'm thin. I can sneak through here like nothing. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Anna Douglas. Anna Douglas. That's right. You must be Scotch. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're not? My husband is. Your husband is, yep. I see. I'm German. You're German? Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, how do they say? V-Gates? Yeah, V-Gates. <laughs> I don't know much German. How long have you been in San Diego? Well, I've been here 30 years. 30 years? Mm -hmm. I guess we can call you a native. Yes. Uh, what does Mr. Douglas do? He's over at North Island, electrician over at North Island. Had to be there real early, I'll bet, oh, too. Yes. I know. I uh, every morning and hear you. Uh-huh. I know I go down on the bus and uh, about the only other gentleman on the bus with me, a gentleman working over in North Island. So I've gotten to know them by sight quite well. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad to, uh, I tell you what, how would you like to try to win maybe a, oh, a couple of spaghetti dinners from Rupert's? Want to take a chance? Okay. I've got slews of questions here. <laughs> Not very good at answering. Not very good at answering? 
This one is real easy. What well-known actor is famous for his portrayal of old Scrooge over the radio? It's the Barrymore. Which one? Lionel. Lionel Barrymore, that's correct. And I think John did it in years past, but John is not with us anymore. Lionel Barrymore is correct, and I want to give you this letter, Mrs. Douglas. And you take that down to Rupert's, and uh, you and your husband have a fine spaghetti dinner, huh? Thank you. Okay, thanks. Gee, I skipped the other side here, the second row. We have young Johnny uh, Marino here taking pictures, and Ted McConnell is taking pictures this morning. We're going to have all kinds of pictures. I think we'll charge you for them. Make a little money on this deal. Yes, there are plenty of seats up here, uh, Frank. Uh, help yourself to seats. Let me talk to Ted up here for a second. <clears throat> Hi, Ted. Hi, Doug. How are you? What you got in your hand there? Oh, old beat-up box. Ted's a camera uh, fiend or fan or... Uh, and fiend, he, uh, <laughs> Ted was the gentleman who took the pictures that uh, some of you who have been down to Stewart's pen shop see hanging up on the wall, and they are very nice. I'm not proud of them. Have you got many shots yet this morning? Oh, I've got about four or five. Uh, which uh, side did you want? Well, this profile, how's this side? <laughs> well, uh, I got the other side. Oh, you got the other? That's not the my good side. <laughs> Glad to have you with us. Well, and who's this little feller? Doug. Doug what? Junior. Doug Junior? Oh, yeah. well, for gosh sakes. How are you, Doug? Fine. I remember last year I couldn't get Doug to say a word, but he's a little older this year, and he'll at least say hello. You want to wish everybody a, you know what? What? Merry Christmas. Go ahead. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's swell. That's my boy. <laughs> and this is Glenda. Hi, Glenda. I remember she was here last year, and you're a year older this year, too, aren't you? Yes. How old are you, Glenda? Eight. Eight years old. My gracious sakes. Where's your daddy? He's at home. He's at home, huh? What's he doing at home? <laughs> Mrs. Jacobs. <laughs> this is Glenda Jacobs. And this is Mrs. Jacobs over here having coffee. How are you? Fine. I have a question I want to ask you. Uh, will you tell us what your husband does, first of all? Bus driver. He's a bus driver. Can you hear us out there? You can't hear us, Bruce? They can't hear us out there. Oh, what a shame. Something happened to our loudspeaker system? No? <laughs> I'm too far away, is that it? Well, anyway, uh, Mrs. J... Oh, there it is. Fine. Testing. One, two. Over. Roger. Uh, I'm going to fix Mrs. Jacobs up here real good. <laughs> Mrs. Jacobs' husband is a bus driver. So this question is for you, Mrs. Jacobs, for a Denstead record album. <laughs> no. <laughs> of what word is the monosyllable bus, meaning conveyance, a contraction? Goodness, I don't know. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> Do you have any idea? No help. Automobile. <laughs> what did you say? Omnibus. What's your name? Mrs. Allen. You're a cheat. <laughs> My own wife, she pulls that on me and helped her. Uh, <laughs> Omnibus is correct, uh, Mrs. Jacobs. Good for you. Good for my wife, too, huh? Thanks a lot. <laughs> and who are these ladies wrapping candy over here? What's your name? Oh, I'm Mrs. Forrest Warren. Oh, my gracious sakes. Let's give Mrs. Warren a hand. I'm sure you all know her. And I know you all have read her column at one time or another. Some very nice things in her column, and uh, uh, you are from Kansas, aren't you? Yes, I Why, came down here on purpose for one thing. There you are, Mrs. Zerb. I told you. <laughs> what did you come down for? Oh, to give you a kiss. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Line forms to the right. Anybody? <laughs> Who's this? I know this is a Ryan over here. This is Mrs. Ryan, I'll bet you. That's right, Mrs. Tom Ryan, Jr. Uh... How's the old boy been behaving lately? Oh, it's well. He's on his vacation now and having a good time. Oh, no wonder he's so frisky. We'll, we'll get to him. Glad to have you with us. And Vi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'd like to miss, wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Well, I thank you. This is Vi Dumbler, and this candy that you see we're wrapping here is from Sholey's Candy Company. And Vi works down there, and what she says goes. She says, you bring some of that candy up to Slumber Busters, they bring it up. So we have some candy. Have I talked to this lady here? What's your name? Gene McMeekin. Oh, for gosh oh, sakes. <laughs> come up here. I feel conspicuous. <laughs> Mrs. McMeekin feels so lonely. Won't somebody come up and keep her company? You know Jeannie McMeekin. I talk to her on the phone. She sends me all kinds of corny questions. 
And uh, you remember we asked that uh, you got your ride down, didn't you? I don't know uh, if she's here or not. I I waited till about 25 or 6 and finally along came a bus. I didn't know it came out there, so I took it. But you mean the person that said they'd give you a ride didn't show up? I don't they know stood what you up? <laughs> and here she Hey, now let's get this straight here. <laughs> Explain yourself, madam. Come on, let's have it. What happened? No, I, you tell I got me. there about 20 minutes up. Oh, and, I see. And I waited, and then I went back and forth. And oh, got, no. And oh, no. <laughs> about five, your, minutes, five minutes of six. What's your name? <laughs> Mrs. Dickens. Mrs. Dickens? Mrs. Carl Dickens. And where do you live, Mrs. Dickens? Hammershaw. In Hammershaw. Yeah. I bet you forgot to put the antifreeze in the car, huh? No, <laughs> no not quite. <laughs> I was just a little late. <laughs> well, shame on you. We'll give you a couple of Ratner records for that. <laughs> Okay, well, now you're all straight. Maybe you get a ride home. I think you should, Mrs. McMeekin, for that. Where are the little ones? Don't you have a little tot or two? Yeah, he happened to wake up at 4.30 this morning, of all morning. I hope uh -huh. he sleeps. Uh-huh. Fine. Just one little one. What does uh, Mr. McMeekin do? Works the post office. Oh, I see. What, does he hand out the stamps, or...? Well, everything. <laughs> oh, he hands out everything. Good. <laughs> Good man to know. What does... Uh, what was your name, Dick? Mrs. Dickin. Mrs. Dickin. Mrs. Charles Dickin. Mrs. Charles Dickin. Well, <laughs> isn't that a coincidence? <laughs> and how's Charles? Just fine. How about those books he wrote? <laughs> I wish he did write them. You wish he did write them. What does Mr. Dickin do, and why isn't he here? He's a county road foreman, and he's still in bed. <laughs> oh, he's still in bed. <laughs> I ask a simple question, I get a straightforward answer. How are we doing on the coffee, Stu? Where is Stu? Oh, here's Mrs. Clay over here. Miss, I want you to meet Mrs. Clay. I know you've all heard her name many times. And isn't that a beautiful hat? <laughs> yes, it's on because she has a cold. <laughs> it's on because she has a cold. <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Clay, uh, uh... What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing on that, uh... Oh, I think it was Carl that was taking oh, care we, of Oh, uh, we just have gone through them. We had I the see. winner. I see. He's Fine. ready to hand it to you. You live out in Mission Beach, and where's Archie? Well, uh... He'll be down at the Grand Hotel pretty soon. Oh, he will, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Doesn't pretty, like our coffee, huh? Pretty, well, he had, to, he had to work till 7 oh, I, oh, that's right. I remember you told me now. Well, uh, I'm going to conveniently forget about the news this morning, so uh, I imagine we'll be on till about 7.15 or pretty close to it. Uh, how long have you been in San Diego, Mrs. Clay? Oh, do I have to tell? Well... Uh, 20... <laughs> Three years. Twenty-three years. Yes, I have. And uh, where are you from originally? Kansas, I New hope. Jersey, <laughs> Illinois, North Dakota, Minnesota, Arizona, and Canada. A foreigner. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mrs. Clay. Glad to have you with us. Now, here's a surprise for some lucky person. We have a lucky seat in the house. So you all want to look underneath your seats, and if you see a sign on it that says, this is a lucky seat, we've got a present for you. Don't spill your coffee. <laughs> Where is that lucky seat? Oh, I hate to I hate to get you all messed up like that. And somebody I just see somebody poured some coffee down somebody's neck here. And <laughs> there it is. We found it. <laughs> Wait till I get the gift. Oh, it's a little girl. And what's your name? Gloria. Gloria what? Keller. Ga Gloria Keller. And is this mother? Yes. Mrs. Keller? Oh, Gloria, how about that? You come right in and sitting down in our old lucky seat. Isn't that wonderful? You know what you've won? This. Isn't that nice? That's a Parker 21 pen from Stuart. See that man peeking around the corner with a bow tie? That's Stuart. Come on out, Stu. Give him a hand. You all know Stu. <laughs> That's the boy. Used to come up on Friday, but uh, <laughs> he started losing his hair. So he had to stay... <laughs> it was too much for him, so he had to stay away. But we got him up here this morning. And uh, Mrs. Keller, uh, uh, what uh, do you do? Housewife. You're a housewife. Uh -huh. And where's Mr. Keller? Navy. In the Navy. In the uh, is he out to sea? Now. Oh, he's in the Mediterranean. Uh -huh. When do you expect him back? Supposed to get back in the States the 23rd of January. Uh-huh. Oh, what a shame he couldn't be here for Christmas, although I should be reminding you about that. You know about that yourself. But congratulations to you, Gloria, and many happy hours of writing with that Parker 21. 
Now, let's see. Where did I leave off on this side? Did I uh, talk to you? I don't think I did. No, you didn't. I'm Mrs. Waite, Patsy Waite's mother. Oh, yes. The for famous sake. lost dog. <laughs> yes, I remember Patsy called us up. Do you remember she had lost her dog? And golly, we talked about it on the radio, and the newspaper reporter went out there, and <laughs> there were big doings around the Waite house. She got her picture in the paper, and they found the dog, didn't they, Patsy? Yes. <laughs> and how are you this morning? Fine. Are you enjoying your vacation from school? I'm not. I don't get out until today. Oh, you don't get out until today. Oh. I go to a school. You go to a private school. Oh, I see. Well, that's good. Uh, Patsy, uh, you uh, are pretty good. I understand that. Uh, didn't you make some cookies? Yes. <laughs> Your mother's laughing. Patsy is quite the little cook. How old are you, Patsy? Eleven. Eleven. Uh huh. And uh, did your mother and daddy eat the cookies? Yes, everybody did. <laughs> Fine. And we talked to uh, your little sister here. I don't have any children. Uh, how long have you been here in San Diego? 27 years. 27 years. My gracious sakes. Uh, oh, that's right. I knew there was something. Today is Mr. and Mrs. Schoonover's wedding anniversary. This young lady right here. Which one? A 41. 41st. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> Say, that's wonderful. Does anybody else have a birthday? Huh? This, today or tomorrow? Oh, Mrs. Warren's birthday is tomorrow. Happy birthday to you. Is that a little low? <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, Mrs. Warren. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, we mentioned that. Oh, the man is here. Wasn't the man here before? My gracious sakes. <laughs> Good morning, sir. I thought I'd talk to you. I'm sorry. What's Good your... Morning. You're Mr... Lewis L. Wagoner. Sweet Let... 16 and never been kissed. Sweet 16 and never been kissed. I'll bet. <laughs> and you, and uh, this is your wife, and she told me you were going to celebrate your 56th anniversary. Right. What, that's on Christmas Day. Yes, sir. Well, let me offer my congratulations to you, sir. At 3 o'clock. How did you do it? I don't know. <laughs> Was it easy? Well, some parts of it, uh -huh. other parts are hard. Say, do you have a word of advice to uh, young people getting married? You I, bet. What is it? Treat them hard. Treat them hard. <laughs> Beat them up, huh? There you have it, gals. Here's from a man who's been married 56 years. Treat them rough, he says. Thanks a lot, Mr. Wagoner. What's your name? Jim Navio. Jim Navio. Yeah. What do you do, Jim? Oh, I'm a student. A San student, San where? San Diego High. San Diego High. Yes. Glad to have you with us. What are you studying, Jim? Oh, a little early. I'd like to take up law later. Take up what? Law. Law? You want to be a lawyer? More or less, yes. What kind of a lawyer? Have you... Oh, no, special. just a uh, general practice. General practice. Hmm, let's see if we can find a question for our student here. <laughs> Let me see. Do you know anything about nursery rhymes? Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> see how good you are. Jim? Or is it Jack? Jim. Jim, pardon me. Uh, in what nursery rhyme is Christmas mentioned? In Christmas? what nursery rhyme is Christmas Night mentioned? Christmas? Uh, that's a poem. No, that uh, isn't uh, what you'd call a nursery rhyme. No. Do you remember? Uh, can't say that I do. In what nursery rhyme was Christmas mentioned? Does this little girl here know? Uh, no, I, I think I'm not sure. What's your name? Judy Navio. Oh, you're uh, Jimmy's sister, huh? How old are you, Judy? Ten. And you don't know what oh, nursery okay. rhyme was mentioned? In... Uh, uh, little Jack uh, Horner. Little Jack Horner, that's right. He sat in the eating his Christmas pie. Golly, I knew you knew it. <laughs> we have a present for you, and it's a record album. You take that letter out to Denstead's, huh? And pick out the album. Who's this fellow over here? Frank Chapman. Frank Chapman. What do you do, Frank? I'm a student. San You're Diego. a student. San Diego. Yeah. Do we have anybody here from Hoover? Yes. <laughs> See you in a minute, kids. <laughs> I got words with you. <laughs> I live right across from Hoover, you know. I have to be kind to the Hooverites. You're from San Diego High, huh? Yeah. Fine. And what are you studying? Oh, a little bit of everything. Football? <laughs> no, not football. <laughs> a little bit of everything, huh? Yeah. Uh, do you have a prime ambition in life? No. Oh. No ambition. <laughs> He'll, yeah, he'll be a radio announcer, sure enough. Thanks a lot. Who's this? This is Evelyn Baldwin. Mrs. I come Edmund? down just to see you. Because Did you really? I've listened to you ever since you've been on the air. Disappointed? 
<laughs> Put her on the spot. She doesn't dare say no, I don't think. <laughs> well, I get up at 5 every morning. Do you so really? What for? Because I have to. You have to. He goes to work. Oh, he goes to work. Uh-huh. And you have to send him off right with that coffee and <laughs> bacon and bacon, or eggs and bacon, huh? What does uh, the, your husband do? Oh, he works at North Island. He works at North Island. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been in San Diego? Oh, about six years. About six I'm years. Astoria, Oregon. Astoria, Oregon. 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 We don't say Oregon. We say Oregon, huh? Oh, I heard you say <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll try and remember that. See, this microphone is awful heavy. Bruce, couldn't you find me a lighter microphone? My arm is about to break. <laughs> I wonder if this lady would like to try for six cans of Point Loma canned goods. What's your name? Lillian Bryan. Elaine Bryan? Lillian. Lillian Bryan. Bryan. Is that Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. And you have a very nice sprig of holly. That's, That's Oregon from home. That's Oregon holly. Uh -huh. That's very nice. That's a nice hat you're wearing, too. When did you kill the bird? <laughs> That's very nice. Well, I tell you, I killed the bird at Hood River, Oregon, Pheasant Hutting House. Is that really? Right. I mean, is that true, really? <laughs> <laughs> I could go on. She has a nice coat, but I won't. <laughs> Fur coat. Glad to have you with us. Now let's see if we can find a nice question for you. For six cans of Point Loma, I think there's some wrinkled peas and pumpkin. I'm not sure just what it is. Uh, <laughs> you do the nursery rhyme. This one is real easy, Mrs. Uh, was it Ryan? Uh, how many reindeer does Santa Claus have? Quick. Oh, eight. <laughs> eight is right. <laughs> That was easy enough, wasn't it? Now, if I can just find the letter. I think that one there. Three cans of Point Loma Country Gentleman corn. And what else does it say? Uh, three cans of Point Loma whole peeled. That always threw me. Apricots, apricots, apricots. I tell you what you do, there's nothing in the letter <laughs> on the envelope. <laughs> But I want you to write your name and address, and we'll have to find a store for you, and then we'll send you the letter in the mail. So will you put your name and address on that and then give it back to me before the program is over? What do you want, Douglas? Um, my, uh, Mrs. Chambers called up and said Merry Christmas. Mrs. Chambers called up and said Merry Christmas? Well, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> my little messenger boy. Now, if I can just get over in here... No, we'll have candy for everybody, says Vi. That's wonderful. Some of you people, if you have to leave before 7.15, why, be sure and just walk up here and get your candy. And I guess everybody that's coming has arrived, so if you still have your gifts and don't know what to do with them, these boxes here are for Family 3 and 101. Don't worry about keeping them separate. We'll sort them out later. And there's another box over there for gifts. And, uh, gee, isn't that wonderful? There are so many. And these people need that stuff so badly, too. Sure is wonderful. Tell me something else. What? Santa, uh, all the other reindeers, but, but, um, uh, Santa Claus even forgot Rudolph. Oh, they no. forgot Rudolph. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Thank you. You want me to open this? Uh, would you open it for me? Go ahead. You open it for me. If I only had three hands, I could, but and who's this gentleman? Uh, Mr. Dawson. Mr. Dawson. What do you do, Mr. Dawson? I work for the Board of Education. Why? Well, <laughs> that's a good place to work. Good place to work. What do you do at the Board of Education? Uh, I'm a do you clean off the uh, blackboards or what? No, that's up to the teacher. That's the teacher's job. We let I, them do that. I see. And what's your job? I'm a junior head custodian. Junior head custodian. Right. Where? At the Garfield School. At the Garfield School. Where is that? At Oregon and Monroe. Oregon and Monroe. Is anybody here from the Garfield School? This she used to be, uh-huh. This is Mr. Dawson. <laughs> Are you a native San Diegan? No, I come from Illinois. Illinois. I've been in San Diego so long they think I'm a native, though. <laughs> you can pass for one, huh? That's right. And uh, where's the missus? Sitting right here. Oh, fine. Here she is. Who's this between you? <laughs> this is Ella Morrow. I know you all know Ella Morrow. And uh, I know a lot of you wanted to know what she looked like. Here she is. <laughs> she lives out in La Jolla. And how are you this morning? Fine. Pretty cold out there. I know. It's very cold out there. And uh, I think you're a native of uh, England. Good old London. M good old London, England. And how long have you been in San Diego, Ella? Yeah, so long I've forgotten. So long you've forgotten, <laughs> huh? <laughs> and what do you do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. What does the mister do? I should put it that way. 
thinks he does a lot. <laughs> he thinks he does a lot. I know uh, uh, you told me that uh, in times past you have conducted a dancing school. Is that right? Yes, uh-huh. I teach stage dancing. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. See, that's wonderful. Ballet and tap. Uh-huh. And uh, I remember one time, I know a lot of the listeners at home remember Double and Nothing. Ella was on Double oh, and Nothing with Walter O'Keefe. <laughs> we remember that very yeah, we well. <laughs> well. Glad to have you with us, uh, Ella. Now, let's see. Mrs. Allen, my wife informs me, Miss Allen must be Onita Allen. I know you've heard her name. She is... Uh, under the weather, I think uh, she is crippled. I know she's been in and out of the hospital, and she called up to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And is Mrs. A.J. Roberts here? I don't think she can get out either. She's more or less confined to her home. I know she's listening with all ears this morning. Oh, you have opened this, Margaret. Thank you. Oh, say, just what I needed. A little camera. You want to take the box? One of those miniature cameras. Will you take the box? Oh. <laughs> Only Orion could do that. It's a, it's a miniature jack-in-the-box made like a camera. We don't have television, so I'll have to explain it. Take your picture. <laughs> that nice? Thank you very much. Douglas McOliver. Thanks. Oh, there's more. Do 55... Oh, three angels, Stu, Doug, and Otto. <laughs> Are they kidding? <laughs> Thanks, Margaret. Now, let's see. We've taken care of this role. Now, let's see. Uh, who is this gentleman? John Mache. John Mache? Mache. Mache. Is that French? Yeah. <laughs> had a birthday a week ago, uh, you should remember. You had a birthday? Oh, you sure, Mule I remember. Train. Mule train, that's yeah. right. How could I ever forget that mule train? <laughs> What do you do, John? I'm a student at Escondido High. Escondido High. Mm -hmm. Did you come down all the way from Escondido? Yeah. Is this your mother here? Mm -hmm. I know she was giggling along here with you. Mrs. Bechet, <laughs> glad to there. have you with us. And well, it was uh, a cold ride this morning. Cold ride. I bet you had to get up real early to get yeah, down here. At four th about quarter after four, I guess. Quarter after four. My gracious sakes. Do you get up uh, early, ordinarily, well, every day? we ordinarily get up around about seven. Around about I seven. You get up at six, Yeah. Huh? You have to be to school that early? No, I listen to you. Oh. <laughs> For no other reason, he gets up to listen to Slumber Busters. That's wonderful. Is our speaker on, Bruce? Yeah, it is a little... slightly. <laughs> What's wrong now, dear? <laughs> Somebody called up and wants to hear Mrs. Oliver. Say hello, Mrs. Oliver. Hello. My wife has a very nice voice. Say some more. What should I say? <laughs> How's little David doing? Where is he? Oh, he's sleeping in the back room. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Can uh -huh. I miss, wish everybody a Merry Christmas? Why, you sure can. Oh, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mrs. Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mrs. Roberts called, and she is listening and wish she could be here. Fine. I think perhaps I'd better go this way and come around and through the middle. <laughs> I hope you've all had some coffee, have you? It's out there in the hall. I'm sorry we couldn't bring it in. Do you have to go? Oh, come here just a second. Let's not leave like this. Who's this? This is Dorothy King. As if I didn't know. Where's Walt? Well, he's up there snagging some candy. Oh, we're getting some candy. Fine, I'm glad you did. He has to go to work, so uh -huh. we have to leave. Glad to have you with us. And this is candy, I know. Hi, Candy. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for coming, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Chase. Oh, fine. <laughs> Say, just a minute, Walt. <laughs> uh, we have a winner on that guessing question. Remember I asked you how many babies were born in New York City in 1943? Old smarty pants Walt Chase came through. The answer is uh, 134,520. And he guessed 135,452. How about that? Let's give him a hand. <laughs> How did you do it, Walt? Oh, I just took a, took a number and added one, and that was it. <laughs> uh-huh. Hi, Otto. You've a long time without a break. Don't we have oh, we want a break? <laughs> We'd better identify it. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is KFSD uh, on the U.S. Grand Hotel. Would you like to take care of it? Do we have a spot? Listen to Otto Miller. 
Dr. Campbell says to senior citizens and pensioners, special low prices and easiest credit terms for your dental place. No money down on approval of your credit, as long as two years to pay. Make first small payment after April 15, 1950. Dr. J.C. Campbell Dentist, 965 7th Avenue, also 3795 30th Street. And now back to Douglas Oliver and the Christmas party. Thank you, Otto. <laughs> that was very nice. Walt, here you are. Here's that wonderful pen and pencil set from Stu's Pen Shop. It's all for you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bob Moore greeting you with an on-the-spot broadcast from Abbott's Jewelers. A great liquidation sale here at University Avenue in Utah in the heart of North Park, San Diego. Open tonight till 9 and every night of the week till 9 until this liquidation sale has been completed. Friends, liquidation is a merciless word. Merciless to him upon whom the liquidation demand is made. But not to the rest of us, to whom a liquidation sale means exciting opportunities. Opportunities most extraordinary. Opportunities to make the liquidity's financial loss our gain. Just such a most extraordinary opportunity is yours now, continuing day and night here until Abbott's Jewelers' fabulous quality stocks are liquidated. Remember the location. Abbott's Jewelers, University Avenue at Utah in North Park. And for the benefit of those of you who may not be familiar with the North Park neighborhood in San Diego, San Diego's population center, by the way, Utah Avenue is just two blocks west of 30th. The intersection here at University in Utah is where you'll find the first traffic signal west of 30th. We have a customer here we're going to call on, and I think she's been looking at these dresser sets here, and I'd like to get a word or two from her on the subject of these beautiful, here's a beautiful sterling silver dressing table set. Yes, sir. Marked at $125 regular price, $65 liquidation sale price. Isn't that a beauty? Oh, that is a gorgeous thing. Of course, I think anything in sterling is a woman's dream. I, uh, I'm inclined to agree uh, to agree with you on that score. Of course, uh, we sort of got your first comment here before we got your name and where you live. Where do you live and what is your name? Your name first, uh, of course. My name is Mrs. Dubiel, and I live in Rolanda Village. Out of El Cajon, then you're not too far. Did you no. drive over? You come over by streetcar and bus. No, I happened to be driving by and saw this sale. Just couldn't resist it. I'm a bargain hunter. I think most Americans are, aren't we? I, th I, so. I, I don't think uh, I don't think there's one of us who will pass up a sale. Well, I'm certainly glad I didn't pass up this one. I've got my husband by the hand. I keep dragging <laughs> him around by all the these well, sets. Have you, have you pushed his arm into buying anything for you yet? Well, I don't know. I'm not saying anything. I just keep pushing him. Well, here's uh, here's a question. Now there are several dressing table sets here. This sterling silver mounted set. Well, this at, is my uh, idea of a gorgeous set. It, it makes, is a gorgeous it set. It's a wonderful monogram. Yes, because of this sterling silver, all these backs and and the uh, powder jar case. And even the uh, nail buffer uh, back would take a beautiful monogram, and wouldn't I it? I like. I don't wear nail polish, and a buffer is the only way to keep one's nails up. I notice you don't uh, wear nail polish. You're a little out of the ordinary these days, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. But I like this set because it has so many different pieces in it. Isn't that a beautiful comb? That is a beautiful comb. It looks as though it might last for a while, too. I think so. <laughs> I said, nail file, I would brush, like to have. a beautiful plate glass mirror, sterling silver backed and handled, by the way. Regular price, $125, single price. I can't get over it. That's half I off. Almost. Almost half off. Lacking $2.50 of being half off. Well, it might be just possible that we have some listeners in tow this evening whose husbands can't afford a uh, $125 sterling silver uh, well, dressing table set, even for $65. Oh, yes. Why that do we walk around? It only comes once a year. Well, that's true. But we might walk around the table here and look at some of these others with a nylon brush uh, set and so yes, forth. I have to take something else, which <laughs> certainly wouldn't be bad. I like this set. That, that, that is a very attractive set, isn't it? Uh-huh. Gold nylon trim. Nylon bristle. Nylon bristle, gold trim, plate glass mirror. A very well, attractive case for it, too. This would take a nice monogram, too. That's yes, what yes, I'm always would. looking for. Always looking for a spot for your monogram? Well, you know, this case is, would make a nice traveling set with the large mirror. It's very handy to yeah, have. It looks like a very, uh, a very stable sort of lock or, cl or clasp on the case, too. Well, this always nine ninety five. Nine ninety five. I can like hardly it. believe it. Now, here's a place for people to come to buy Christmas presents for all their friends, right? I should say so. Everything like from... I said, I have my husband in tow, and I'm not letting him get away very easily. <laughs> in other words, you're you're not deceived by the Santa Claus myth. You know who's Santa Claus in your home, is that it? <laughs> I should say I do. <laughs> well, you know, my second choice for something around here is silver. We don't own a good set of silver. And it's, as I said before, it's a woman's dream to have something in silver. That's right. Either really good uh, Roger silver plate or sterling either oh, one, for that matter. I should say so. You know what so. I think we ought to do? I, th I think we ought to... 
to drag the uh, old man over here and uh, get a commitment from him on this uh, I think I'm case before we let loose of him. How are you tonight, sir? Good evening. Well, what do you think of it? Are you going to buy it or not? Well, I don't know how I could hardly resist <laughs> for the price. But, but... Well, look at some of the well, silver over here. All right. Let's, let's, take, let's take a look at these uh, silver sets. Here's a 52-piece uh, William Rogers and Son service for eight. 52 pieces. That must be plate, isn't it? Yes, at it that is. price, including the chest at $39.95, that couldn't be sterling, could it? No, it couldn't be I sterling, but... I do more shopping for these things <laughs> than I do. I should know. say I do. Right. But, of course, I always have said I prefer to have a full and complete set of plates than just a few odds and ends of silver. Of oh, sterling, sterling of yes. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, here's a complete set of plates, William Rogers and Son. Oh, 52 it's pieces. Original they... Rogers by International, by the way. That's International Silver Company, I think, isn't it? Yes, it is. According to their Sunday afternoon advertising. Uh, Ozzie and Harriet, yes. And so $39.95. <laughs> and then here's another set over here, 50 pieces for thirty-three fifty. Oh, that's an exquisite And here's a, here's a, this must be a sterling set here. Let's see, can you slide back in here and back behind the counter? I don't know what the boss is no, going to think of this. This is plate two, but this is 137 pieces for eight. Service for eight, 159. No, that's service for 12. 137 pieces, service for oh, eight. Mm-hmm. That's right. right, service for eight. That is a complete service, though, 137 pieces, 159.95. Incidentally, all this merchandise we're telling you about, we're reading you the standard, the regular day-to-day prices on, the, on these uh, bits of merchandise, and uh, you'll find uh, different prices on them when you get out here. That's for sure. Right? I should say it is right. If you can just keep me around, I'll assure you that you won't have any trouble selling. (laughs) Well, there's only one difficulty. We can't sell you more than one uh, dressing table set or one set of of, uh, tableware, can we? I noticed that (laughs) sign. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I appreciate you coming on the mic here with us. And we have, uh, right, and we have a few more people here we'd like to interview before this broadcast gets over. Move this microphone over here, pardon me, and... Here is a young lady who works at Atlas Jewelers, and she should be able to give us some really down-to-earth information on much of this merchandise here. And what is it you'd like to call attention to this evening? Our uh, baby jewelry. Baby jewelry? Well, let's get into the subject of baby jewelry. It's something in which I'm, or through which I move with an abysmal ignorance, if you know what I mean. Now, what, what, well, there are spoons and little cups and, uh, and, um, the little bells. bells. Oh, I have those teasing rings. Eh? All right. Um, why don't you just take the microphone here and uh, try to give the listeners uh, a view of this case of baby jewelry and, ba- and baby silver that they'd have if they were standing in front of us. Would you do that, Miss Potter? I'd love to. We have everything from the and gifts for the tiny baby up to the 8 and 10-year-old child. I see some rings here, Beyonce. Yes, we began with the tiny band rings for the babies, and then the, they work up to the rings that are suitable for 10-year-old girls. Then we have the uh, gold signet rings for boys. We have the Miss Mignon jewelry by Spidell, which is one of the most beautiful lines of baby jewelry made. We have the little tiny expansion bracelets and locket sets. And then is everything for, in this case marked down, by the way, during this liquidation sale? All except the fair traded articles. There are a few things we can't mark down. You simply can't. Everything else in the case, then, is marked down. Yes. This counts as much as 50%. Yes, that's right. In other words, I think this presents the mother and dad of a youngster, whether the youngster is weeks old or a few years old, with a wonderful opportunity to get them something really nice and fine for Christmas without paying two prices for it. In other words, they buy it at half price, right? That's right. And it's also good for auntie. Uncle, grandmother, granddad, and friends. And the whole family. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. Watches, diamonds, jewelry of all sorts. Well, i tell you what I'd like to do now. I'd like to take the microphone into the other room and see if I can find Mr. Abbott and get a few words from that gentleman himself on the subject of this sale. Mr. Abbott, who is at this particular moment waiting on a customer, showing, uh, showing the lady some tight pins, aren't you? Quite a selection of tight pins you have there, too. I'd like to have a word or two uh, from you, Mr. Abbott, on the subject of the sale, the reason for the sale, and also uh, the features of the sale, including your watches and your diamonds. Would you take over from here for just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Abbott of Abbott Stewart? Thank you, Bob. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, reason for this uh, sale is that we are tremendously overstocked out here. Another thing is that 
We'd like for the name of Abbott's Jewelry to become more familiar to the uh, people in San Diego. We're located out here in North Park. We think the very heart of the city of San Diego, among the finest people here. Uh, we're very proud of our uh, clientele out here, our location, and of North Park. We uh, came here a short time back, a few years, and established a little store here. We've tried to grow with the community. And uh, right now, we're uh, trying for more, bigger, and better business, Bob. Well, I appreciate your little visit with us here, Mr. Abbott. And I wish the listeners could be here right this minute. I'd like to remind them all that your store here at University in Utah will be open 9 till 9 daily, six days a week, from now until this liquidation sale has been completed. Isn't that right? That's right, Bob. I might mention here that... Our diamonds are specially priced at this uh, occasion. We have taken one-third off our regular prices, and that goes straight through. There's been nothing repriced for the occasion, Bob, and we always carry in stock diamonds anywhere from the beginning up to $2,000 at all times. Did you get the word in about uh, how you buy your diamonds? Well, Bob, we always buy direct from the importers. It gives us a very good opportunity on price. We buy our mountings loose make up our own styles and do our own setting and styling. Tell you what the patron wants. That's words, right. They choose the stone and they choose the mounting and you mount the stone and the mounting they want. That's true. In other and words, it's more or less of a custom routine and still, uh, because you buy them directly from the importers, you're, you're able to save them money. Well, we find that saves us about 20%, Bob, and we're willing to pass that saving on to the customer and by the time that's figured out in the retail, it's quite a saving to a customer. Incidentally, that, uh, that 20% will just about take care of that federal excise tax. By the time you get to retail, Bob, it more than takes care of it. You'll find our prices will average about one-third lower than uh, competition most all the time. All the time, right on through, as far as diamond rings and diamond stones and diamond settings are concerned. That's true, Bob. Well, sir, I appreciate your stopping by here and explaining some of these things to our listeners. I'd like to say here before we close, I think we have another customer over here. We might be able to get on the microphone for just a moment. We don't have too much time left, just a minute or so. What's your name, sir? Um, Lee Clapham. Well, what are you looking so happy about, Mr. Clapham? Well, I don't know. Just feel happy. <laughs> What'd you do? Just make a buy? Just steal something or what? Oh, uh, no. I don't I mean steal literally, of course. I mean, <laughs> did, you, did you just pay for something that was a steal? Well, uh, yes. I uh, dropped over here to get a present for my wife. And what did you find? And, uh, well, I found uh, many, many things. Did your wife like diamonds? Yes, uh, well, I don't know if uh, we can uh, quite afford that, but we'll certainly... Have you have you checked uh, the sale price? Of well, I was, was talking I was talking to Mr. Abbott, and he seemed... Well, get him to take you back to, to the safe there and show you some of those diamonds, and then check the price tag. Well, I certainly will. I'll <laughs> do that right away. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you very much. It's just about time to leave you again this evening. This has been an on-the-spot broadcast right from the store here, Abbott's Jewelers, the site or scene of a truly gigantic liquidation sale of Abbott's Jewelers here at University Avenue and Utah in the very heart of North Park. You choose here from the proudest names in jewelry, silverware, watches, dresser sets, china and crystal dinner sets. Your selections include exquisite diamond creations, yes, everything that has made the name Abbott's Jewelers synonymous with fine quality. And you pay now during this liquidation sale, you pay only a fraction of the real value for your selection. Because Abbott's Jewelers must liquidate a terrific overstock. And so to crowd months of selling into a few weeks' time, prices have been cut and cut and cut again. Yes, here at this time, when sale prices on merchandise of this quality are such a happy circumstance for you people who are out Christmas shopping, Abbott's Jewelers' liquidation sale prices are far lower than you imagine. And so, friends, the thing for all of us to do is to be at University Avenue in Utah in North Park tonight or night and day from now until the end of this liquidation sale. Abbott Jewelers Liquidation Sale, University Avenue in Utah. There goes the streetcar again. Time to say goodnight to you. And we do say from Abbott Jewelers in North Park, good night and pleasant Christmas shopping right here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bob Moore greeting you from Abbott's Jewelers at University Avenue and Utah in North Park, San Diego, where a gigantic liquidation sale is now underway. Friends, liquidation is a merciless word, merciless to him upon whom the liquidation demand has been made, but not to the rest of us, to whom a liquidation sale means really exciting opportunities. Opportunities most extraordinary. Opportunities to make the liquid deeds, financial loss, 
are again. Just such a most extraordinary opportunity is yours here and now tonight, continuing day and night until Abbott's jeweler's fabulous quality stocks are liquidated. Remember the location here, University Avenue and Utah, the northeast corner of that intersection in North Park. And for the benefit of those of you among you San Diegans who've lived here for 20 years and can't place Utah, Utah is the second street west of 30th. And Abbott's jewelers is on the northeast corner of Utah and University Avenue in San Diego. To hear the streetcar go by, just another indication of how easily you can find University in Utah here in North Park, San Diego. A lot of items here, costume jewelry at half price and men's jewelry and ladies' basket weave expansion, watch band bracelets and, th and things of that sort. But before we go into any discussion of the merchandise, the quality of the merchandise and the, the degrees of price cutting that are underway here at Abbott's Jewelers now, I'd like to bring to the microphone our good friend Mr. Abbott himself is going to say a few words on the subject of the basis for the sale and the reason behind it. Hello, Mr. Abbott. How are you tonight? Hello, Bob. It's, uh quite a rare opportunity for me to talk over a microphone, uh, Bob, but uh, we considered the uh, psychology involved in a sale here at this time of year, the fact that we are overstocked tremendously, the opportunity uh, happened along at the right time for additional space for this uh, unusual sale at this time of year, but uh, we do want to create the wrong impression with this sale, we do handle and deal strictly in high-class merchandise and in a high-class type of business, both credit and cash. We're offering many of the highest class lines and brands of merchandise in the jewelry industry on this sale, Bob. I know that, Mr. Abbott. I've seen that here myself and walking around this evening. There was a question, a point, which occurred to me in regard to your sale this particular time of year. Most uh, merchants will not uh, indulge in sales in the the last few days before Christmas or the last few weeks before Christmas, they think, well, they'll hold the sale off till after Christmas when things do naturally and normally slow down. And you might give us a word or two on the subject of why you've timed this sale as you have here and now. But Bob, psychology involved on that point is the uh, fact that to us, it's much easier to sell people something that they want when they want it than it is to wait until after the occasion has passed, and then offer to you. Well, I see your point there, Mr. Abbott. I'm going to say a word of thanks to you now for standing by here in the microphone for us so nicely. I thought we might wander around the store here and interview some of your customers, if we can find any customers who don't suffer from mic fright at the very sight of this little microphone here. That's fine, Bob. Good right here. Right, thanks a lot. Well, the point of this sale here and now is to reduce and to liquidate an overstock. And instead of waiting until beyond the Christmas time, the Christmas buying season, Mr. Abbott has decided to put on the sale before Christmas, which gives many of you, San Diegans, and every one of you, San Diegans, for that matter, an opportunity to buy the things you've been wanting to buy, but buy them at post-Christmas sale prices before Christmas. So you'll have these fine gifts which you've been wanting to buy members of your family and members of your uh, circle of friends. We have here a young lady who looks like a customer. She has a wrapped package in her hand. What is your name, please? My name is Mrs. Hall. Mrs. Hall, and where do you live, Mrs. Hall? I'm from Coronado. Coronado? Well, this is North Park, and Coronado's a long way away across the bay. How do you happen to be here? It certainly is a long ways away, but I saw this big ad in one of the San Diego papers, and just couldn't resist coming over here. After all, most of the stores aren't open until 9 o'clock, and it's certainly an advantage to have a store like this open until that time. With Christmas coming up, you know, you need a lot of things. I think we all need a lot of things with Christmas coming up. What have you found so far? that it has interested you, and what have you bought so far, Mrs. Hall? Well, the thing that's interested me the most is this Buddha jewel chest. I've been to China, and I have so many lovely Chinese things, and all my friends want them, too. And I haven't been able to get anything, as you know. And since I've seen this particular thing in the sale, I just couldn't resist coming over and taking a look at it. It's really one of the most exquisite chests I've ever seen. It looks almost like ivory with it teakwood base. You mean that it's ivory? <laughs> no, it isn't, but it certainly is a wonderful reproduction. I'd have taken my oath that it is ivory. Well, I particularly like the red one, and you know, there's something strange about the, <laughs> the whole thing. I say strange, because most good chests only have one or two drawers, and these are such beautiful things, and they have three exquisite drawers with this very satin like finish inside. I like the design on the top that they've reproduced so nicely. The way it stands up, 
almost like a regular hand carving. Almost a typical Chinese scene with a river and a pagoda in the background. Well, I'd be just as willing to turn my in on something like this if I could have gotten it for as little. Is that a 95? cigarettes or two compartments for the king size cigarettes lengthwise in the box. Is that right? Yes, well, being a Navy wife and having so many people in, I like having a cigarette box large enough for several kinds of cigarettes. Well, Mrs. Hall, it's been a pleasure to have you here, and I appreciate you coming on the air with us. I'd like to take the microphone over here now to one of the sales ladies here at Abbott's Jewelry Store and see if we can get a word or two from her on a couple of subjects here of items that are on sale. Billy Potter, right? right? Billy Potter, Miss Potter, could you tell us a word or two about the men's jewelry that's on sale now at half price? We have some of the outstanding lines in men's jewelry. Swain, Tyson, and Hadley. Just about everything you could ask for in men's high class, key chains, and with high chains, cufflinks. And it's all on sale at half price. Every bit of it, nothing's held back on the men's, uh, the, uh, men's jewelry. It's all half price, right? That's right, every bit of it. What about this 75 piece, uh, piece matching china and crystal dinner set? Can we take the mic over there and, uh, and you explain it uh, to our listeners while uh, you look at it? Try to draw them a picture of it for us. Would you do that? Where is it? From here. Right around the table. I think I'm going to have to lay the mic cord across the table. Let me see if I can get around. Take this mic cord around. Thank you very much. Pardon me. Take the mic cord on across the table here. There's a table right in the middle of the, of the larger of these two rooms here at Abbott's. The table must be 18 feet long and five and a half to six feet wide, simply loaded with, with uh, merchandise on sale at half price or even better. Now, would you like to describe this 75-piece matching china crystal dinner set for us? I'd appreciate it if you would. I mean, I think this takes a woman's viewpoint, don't you? Yes, it certainly does. The uh, china is a plain white, has a small design, a flower design on it, service for six. The glasses, there are three sizes in glasses, six feet, six coasters. The glasses have the wide gold band at the top and then the narrow gold band. The, uh, the silverware, well, the flatware with it is a chrome plate, and it is also serviced for six. Oh, I see. The chrome plate silverware is included in this set, right? Eh? Yes, it is. And the total price? 1975. 1975. That's half price. In other words, it yes. should be 3950 mm -hmm. roughly, right? Well, that makes a very attractive buy for a Christmas gift for some friend of the family, wouldn't you say? Oh, it would make a lovely gift for anyone. What else is there here that you'd like to discuss? I see some of these little plastic uh, ice cubes, the type you put into your refrigerator, and then uh, uh, you use them to, uh, to uh, chill drinks without watering your drinks. Is that right? Oh, that's right. What are, what's a, what are those worth for a set of six? Those are 75 cents. But I say I'm more interested in our glass and berry uh, crystals All than right. those. Go on, tell us about it. <laughs> we have uh, three beautiful patterns in Glastonbury. Sovereign, uh, Minton, and Yorktown. The uh, $1.75 value, the uh, stem, are uh, 69 cents now, and the $1.50 value of 49 cents. Thank you very much, Billy Potter. I think we'll try to take the microphone now into the other section of the store here. Thanks for the help there very much. Pardon me. Pardon me, sir. Slide on through into the other section of Abbott's Jewelers here. And uh, would you like to come over here, sir, and tell us about some of these things? What's your impression of the price tags you see here at Abbott's Jewelers this evening? What is your name, please? Tom Mitchell. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, what business are you in? I'm a contractor. Contractor, eh? Small. How do you happen to be here? Uh, I would face the inescapable necessity of liquidating their entire fabulous stock. Sacrifice is the demand. And so, to crowd months of selling into days, Prices are cut irregardless of cost or profit, and prices are cut not after, but before Christmas, right now. The sale opened today, and the store will be open from 9 to 9 daily, six days a week, 
until this dock has been liquidated. You choose from the proudest names in jewelry and silverware and watches and dresser sets, chinas and crystal dinner sets. Your selections include exquisite diamond creations, everything that has made the name Abbas Jewelers synonymous with fine quality. You pay only a fraction of the real value. And so, come in to Abbas Jewelers tonight. Are open till 9 tonight and from 9 till 9 daily, six days a week, until such time as this entire magnificent stock has been liquidated. Remember, Abbas Jewelers, northeast corner of University Avenue and Utah in North Park, San Diego.